There we go, ladies and gentlemen. We got it working now. It is Tuesday, and it is time for the Tuesday Dow. Reading from Dr. Wayne W. Dyer's Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, Living the Wisdom of the Dow. And don't we all need a little bit more wisdom or, you know, advice on how we can increase the quality of our lives? Because so many of us spend so much time stressed out about things that are ridiculous. Now, I'm not saying that so many of us spend so much time stressed out about things that are not ridiculous, because there is also that, ladies and gentlemen. But it's important for us to notice the difference. But today's topic is probably not along those lines. <laughs> today's topic is the 56th verse of Tao Te Ching, which Wayne Dyer titles Living by Silent Knowing. And so he begins by saying here, this is probably the best known verse of the Tao Te Ching itself. In fact, the opening two lines are so popular that they've almost become a cliche. And so living by silent knowing, ladies and gentlemen, and let's dive right into what that means and what the title of this video really means. We begin here with the 56th verse of the Tao Te Ching. And it says, those who know do not talk. And those who talk do not know. Block all the passages. Close your mouth. Cordon off your senses. Blunt your sharpness. Untie your knots. Soften your glare. Settle your dust. This is primal union or the secret embrace. One who knows this secret is not moved by attachment or aversion, swayed by profit or loss, nor touched by honor or disgrace. He is far beyond the cares of men, yet comes to hold the dearest place in their hearts. This, therefore, is the highest state of man. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, fascinating. That's a deep one. I mean, as always, these verses are coming to us from Lao Tzu from 2,500 years ago, so you can imagine they're very deep and metaphorical and could have many meanings to many different people. But simplest of all, those who know do not talk and those who talk do not know. So I must have no idea, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm fine with that because the more you know, the more you find that you don't know. And I hope everybody's got themselves a nice warm beverage on this December afternoon. It's December 13th on the date of recording this, and it's been such a great series since starting this last year. Now, 56, maybe 58 episodes into this series of the Dow, and there's been a lot to learn. I just got a comment this morning from an episode I did many months ago from someone who had just discovered it, and they were very uh, thankful and appreciative, and I was in return because if, you know, it's... It's good to know that this is at least getting somewhere with some people, because these are things that have the ability to truly change our lives, ladies and gentlemen, this kind of wisdom. And so what today, what is today talking about? This primal union or the secret embrace. And one who knows this secret is not moved by attachment or aversion, swayed by profit or loss nor touched by honor or disgrace. Very interesting. To me, what stands out about those three things there is the, the opposite nature of attachment and aversion. So when you're attached to, you're really clinging to something. And aversion would be you're avoiding or staying away from something. And the secret sits in the center and knows. It says the one who knows this secret is not moved by either of these opposite poles. And so as we all sit around in a ring and suppose the secret sits in the center and knows, ladies and gentlemen. 
And to truly come to know this secret, whatever it is for you, I think we're describing a connection to God here, and whatever that is for you, because it's different for each of us. But when he says, block all passages, close your mouth and cordon off your senses, blunt your sharpness, untie your knots, settle your dust, so to speak. Imagine yourself covered in dust. In order to settle that dust, was, was, what must we do, ladies and gentlemen? We must become still and peaceful and practice that. Not because, oh, we're going to be still and peaceful, but because it's worth the effort. And then we get to know new things within ourselves. So let's dive right into what Dr. Wayne Dyer has to say about this 56th verse of the Tao Te Ching and what he titles Living by Silent Knowing. Wayne begins by saying, this is probably the best known verse of the Tao Te Ching. In fact, the opening two lines, those who know do not talk and those who talk do not know, are so popular that they've almost become a cliche. Nevertheless, though, the passage's essential message is little understood and rarely practiced. That bit there about it being little understood I can resonate with because the way that Lao Tzu or the translator of this version of the verse decided to use the words makes it very um, cryptic, so to speak, or very hard to get the simple meaning out of it. Wayne Dyer continues here, Lao Tzu is calling you to live in the highest state of silent knowing, that place deep within you that can't be communicated to any other person. So there is this place, ladies and gentlemen, deep within each of us, that is impossible to communicate to other people. And so consequently, Wayne continues, you might want to change your thinking about whom you consider to be wise or learned. Mm, this might be a lesson for me, ladies and gentlemen, because I do a lot of talking. I do less talking nowadays than I used to, even though you see me talking here on these videos, but when I would go out to, you know, places with friends or whether it be co-workers or whatever, my family members, and when I would encounter and communicate with people in life, uh, in the past, I would spend too much time trying to, uh, you know, just talking. It's the old story of the cup and the man who, you know, who was a wise, he was a great teacher. Here in the West, you know, college professor about Zen philosophy. And so he has this opportunity to travel to, you know, somewhere in the Far East and meet this Zen master who lives up on a mountain in a temple. And he's so excited when he gets there. He wants to tell this master all the things that he knows about Zen because it's just so important. And he, he just wants to say it and say it and talk about it and tell the Zen master all the things that he knows. And so the Zen master is, he's listening, of course. See, here's the, here's the dichotomy that we're getting at, ladies and gentlemen. There is listening and there is the opposite of that. I don't know if you can talk and listen at the same time. Unless you practice listening to yourself, but that just might be crazy, ladies and gentlemen. And so, <laughs> but anyways, a little comedy there. This Zen master asks the man while he's telling him all the things about Zen. He says, would you like a cup of tea? And you've probably heard this story before, but if you haven't, the man says, well, yes, I'd, I'd like that. That sounds quite nice. And then he continues telling the Zen master about all the things that he knows about Zen. He keeps talking, ladies and gentlemen. He keeps going on. And so the Zen master begins pouring the tea in the cup. And he fills his own and then goes to the man's cup, who's still talking, begins filling his cup and the cup gets full, and the Zen master keeps pouring. 
And then the cup begins overflowing onto the table and eventually onto the lap of the man. He goes, whoa, what are you doing here? You, you've overfilled the cup. And the Zen master looks at him and says, you too are like the cup. You are too full and you must empty your cup before you can learn anything new. And to me, that is a translation of this idea or this dichotomy, this uh, polarity or, you know, two-sidedness of listening and speaking. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, we must empty our cup. Because sometimes we are too much like the overflowing cup, where we have no room for more. And so let me continue now with what Dr. Wayne Dyer is saying here. Persuasive speakers with a good command of the language who are forceful in their pronouncements and confident in their point of view are generally considered to have superior knowledge. That makes me think of a great quote. Even a fool seems wise who keeps his mouth shut. So if you're not a fool, you may seem even more wise if you learn when to hold your tongue, ladies and gentlemen. Because what Wayne said there a second ago, you might want to change your thinking about whom you consider to be wise or learned and whom you want to project yourself to as wise and learned. So it's uh, so this idea that these people that can speak really good and who are forceful in their pronouncements and confident in their points of view are generally considered to have superior knowledge. But Lao Tzu suggests that precisely the opposite is true. Those who talk, he says, aren't living from a place of silent knowing, so they do not know. And you may recall this kind of feeling when you are trying to convince somebody of something, but there comes a point in which the effort of convincing is no longer worth it. Um, and so you just remain silent in your own knowing your own understanding and you don't need to convince other people if they want to listen then great but if not then that's fine too i have no idea what i'm going to title this video <laughs> and so as you modify wayne dyer continues the way that you look at this presumption you'll see several differences in the way your world appears see that's what this is all about when you change your thoughts and your presumptions and assumptions and whatever about the world, the way you think it is, when you change that, what it is actually changes. Even though it could seem to be the same thing to somebody who has yet to change that. But for you, it becomes something entirely new. So first, Wayne Dyer continues, you'll note that those who are compelled to pontificate and persuade are almost always tied to an attachment of some kind. Perhaps it's to a point of view or to being right or to winning or to profiting in some way. And the more talking they do, the more they appear to be swayed by such attachments. The second thing you'll notice that takes place within you, you begin to see your inclination and desire to persuade and convince others. And you, you begin to notice it more easily. It's like, wow, I am trying to persuade and convince others. And I do have some kind of weird desire for that. This is when you get good, ladies and gentlemen, is when you start realizing your own behaviors from like a unattached perspective. Like you're like, oh, that's me doing those things. Interesting. Which part of me? And that's when you get into deeper questions. But Wayne continues here. You begin to see your inclination and desire to persuade and convince others. Then you begin to listen more attentively. Finding yourself in, quote unquote, the secret embrace of the primal union, which Lao Tzu mentioned 
in this 56th verse of the Tao Te Ching. So you begin to consciously take a step back and control yourself in your convincing, you know, and you notice that and you begin to slip into this act of purposeful listening. And you can begin to discover what Lao Tzu described as the secret embrace of the primal union. And so Wayne Dyer continues here, your need to be knowledgeable or dominant is replaced by the deep realization that it's all relevant. Literally every bit of it is relevant and connected. And you lose interest in seeking approval. Living in silent knowing becomes the process that casts your existence into a very different light, ladies and gentlemen. You have less of an edge and feel settled, softer, and more centered. We're able to let our dust settle, ladies and gentlemen. And I think most importantly there, when this uh, you know need to be knowledgeable or convincing or dominant or win the argument or whatever it be, is replaced by this realization that it's all relevant and it all matters just as much as any other thing, you lose an interest in seeking approval of others. Remember the three things to self-actualization, ladies and gentlemen. You become unattached from the good opinion of other people, which includes the bad opinion of other people. In other words, you become detached from any opinions of other people. You become detached from the outcome, so you're just on purpose. And then you have no investment in control or domination or power or convincing other people. And then you can be what Maslow described as self actual As you change how you think about what it means, Wayne continues, to be intelligent and wise, you come into contact with the irony that sums up this wonderfully paradoxical section of the Tao Te Ching. Lao Tzu says that the sage who lives by the Tao is, quote, far beyond the cares of men, yet holds the dearest place in their hearts. Wayne says, I'd sum it up this way. Those who care the least about approval seem to get it the most. Now, isn't that a paradox, ladies and gentlemen? And think about this in, uh, you know, a search for a relationship. It's like those who are the most desperate seem to struggle more often than those who are just like fine within themselves. Anyways, that that's another subject that we get into often about the law of attraction, the paradoxical nature of, you know, how when you're pushing and striving, things work out way more difficult than when you're not trying so hard, which is confusing. You would think the harder you try, the further you get. But... As we learn from the tortoise and the hare, ladies and gentlemen, a slow and steady pace will win the race. <laughs> I didn't expect to bring that analogy in, but let's continue here. Since such individuals aren't concerned with how they're perceived, either honorably or in disgrace, they don't seek praise or run from it. While their calm wisdom may make them appear to be aloof, aloof or aloof, they actually end up gaining the respect of everyone. Interesting. You have this place of silent knowing within you right now, ladies and gentlemen. And the following is what Lao Tzu suggests for adapting the paradoxical language of this verse of the Tao Te Ching to your world and to our lives. Number one, block all the passages. So Wayne says, get honest with yourself about wanting to win the favor of others. And that's a real secret in this self-development, you know, this, uh, this growth path that 
I'm always describing and that I feel that those of us seeking higher knowledge and higher ways should see ourselves on is the most important aspect is becoming honest with ourselves and being okay with that, not judging ourselves for being who we are and where we are. And then finding a way to really appreciate that and be grateful for being able to notice our flaws and who we are and where we are on our path. And so get honest with yourself about wanting to win the favor of others. You don't have to prove anything to anyone, Wayne says. And you'll never succeed by droning on and on. So remember that those who talk do not know. Or as one translation of this verse simply states, shut your mouth. <laughs> and I wondered if he was going to say it that way, ladies and gentlemen. But silence is your evidence of inner knowing. Talking to convince others actually says more about your need to be right than their need to hear what you have to say. Like I said, this is a great lesson for myself. Because when you learn so much of this stuff, all you want to do is tell the Zen master everything you know while he just overflows your cup and it's running all over the place. <laughs> but so rather than trying to persuade others, keep quiet and just enjoy that deeply satisfying inner awareness. Now, number two here on how we can how we can find this silent place of knowing within us, and what Lao Tzu or Wayne Dyer thinks Lao Tzu suggests for adapting this verse of the Tao Te Ching into our life. Number two, use the acronym BUSS, B -U -S -S, to remember the four directives of this verse. The first B, blunt your sharpness. He says, do this by listening to yourself before you let your judgments attack someone else. Wow, that's powerful. A better course of action is to just listen and then silently offer loving compassion to both yourself and the other person. So the second letter here in our BUS acronym, you untie your knots. Detach from what keeps you tied or connected to worldly patterns. Untie the knots that bind you to a life that's dedicated to showing profit and demonstrating victory. And replace them with silently contemplating the Tao or God or the universe or whatever in what Lao Tzu described as the secret embrace or the settled position. Third letter, S, B-U-S-S. -S. We're, on we're on the third letter there. Soften your glare. Notice when you need to be right. And then notice also, there's a lot of self-awareness here. Self, um, like noticing the kind of thoughts that you're having. And that itself is a practice on its own. But begin to do that. And notice when your need to be right is glaringly obvious. And then let the soft underside of your being replace your rigid stance. Your impulse to glower or glower at external events is alerting you that you're out of touch with your inner silent knowing. And then number four, B-U-S-S. -S. Settle your dust. Don't kick it up in the first place. Realize your inclination to stir up dust when you feel a diatribe about to erupt on how others ought to be behaving or on how you feel about this thing and that thing. And Don't even kick it up in the first place, ladies and gentlemen. Realize your inclination to do so when you feel this coming on and stop in the middle of pounding the table or angrily screaming and just... Observe yourself. Isn't that a challenge for most of us? This is a lot about self-awareness here and becoming silent and knowing yourself. Stop in the middle of your 
wild activity and just observe yourself. Since your emotions are like waves on the ocean, learn to watch them return to the vast calm, all-knowing source. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of each of these wonderful little lessons here, Wayne Dyer gives us what he calls Do the Tao Now, a way that we can really try to put this into action simply in our lives. And so today's Do the Tao Now. Spend an hour, a day, or a week, or a month practicing not giving unsolicited advice. Unsolicited advice, meaning the advice where people didn't ask for it. You're just like, this is what I think about what you should be doing. And so I'd like to think that the advice I'm giving you here today from Dr. Wayne Dyer and Lao Tzu is solicited. You wanted this advice, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope it's helpful. But so spend some time practicing not giving advice unless people ask for it. Stop yourself for an instant and call upon your silent knowing. And then instead of telling everybody what you think, ask a question. Rather than giving advice or citing an example from your life. And then just listen to yourself and the other person. And see, it's a different way about going about conversation. It's like, well, as Lao Tzu would like you to know, this ability to just listen to yourself and the other person is known or was known to him as, quote, the highest state of man or of a human being. Mm. The highest state, ladies and gentlemen, the ability to be content within yourself in the silent knowing and not needing to be right and needing to convince. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, that's a boom to knowledge. And that was the 56th verse of the Tao Te Ching. Next Tuesday, we'll be on the 57th verse, and it's talking about living without authoritarianism. That might be a controversial subject, ladies and gentlemen, because we all know how we feel about authoritarianism. And I thought it interesting yesterday, Campbell mentioned the relation between the word author and authorities. But mm, good stuff, ladies and gentlemen, good stuff there for us. The ability to find the silent knowing and come to know ourselves. 56th verse of the Tao Te Ching. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for being here and joining me and Dr. Wayne Dyer and Lao Tzu for the wonderful knowledge that he brings to us in trying to live the wisdom of the Tao, the wisdom of the Tao in our lives. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, Seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment, through a greater awareness, which is what that means to me. A greater understanding of the nature of the world that we find ourselves in, a greater understanding of how our mind works and how if we change the way we think, then the world we experience, the life that we have, changes as well. And usually for the better, if we change the way we think for the better. And so continue to seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment, and continue to seek to discover the wisdom of the ages. And we'll be back tomorrow on Wednesday Wisdom with some more fantastic wisdom, some more hermetic teaching, since so many of you loved last week's video. And I really appreciate the response that that got, some good comments there. And so we'll be diving into more history of the hermetic, hermetics or the hermetica tomorrow. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, remember to make happiness the way. Because there is no way to happiness. It is the way. And so when we can begin to practice bringing that into our life as you know, a process, as an activity, something that we actually do with effort and takes practice, we can begin to already be where we so long been striving, telling ourselves, oh, I'll be happy when I get there. And then the entire journey will be wonderful, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. I love and appreciate all of you. Be sure to expand the description below the video. I think it's on this side now. 
Just click the little button down there and it'll open up a larger description for you and I'll have links there to the book, to an audio book as well that you can get if you like to listen rather than read. I also have links to my Etsy shop with my landscape paintings in the back. It's Christmas time, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll ship them fast. I usually ship it the next day, and then it takes about four or five, you know, whatever the shipping was that was selected. But so if you need a landscape painting as a gift to give somebody, ladies and gentlemen, that's a great idea. Expand the description below and check that out, as well as a link to C60 Purple Power. Give the gift of health. Because I know everybody needs a little bit of help, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all right. Love you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. And oh, yeah, the T thing says gratitude leads to love. Gratitude leads to love, ladies and gentlemen. So let's try to build that gratitude and begin to experience that inner knowing, that silent place. Na -na 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 -na.